Sony has changed almost everything about its home entertainment lineup, and in more ways than one. I'm about to show you Sony's craziest LED TV ever, and that ain't even the half of it. Stick around because you are not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and sitting on news is just part of my job, but I'm not exaggerating when I say that keeping all this info that I'm about to share with you a secret has been a special kind of challenging. That's because I think it is so interesting and exciting. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Let's get into it right now. For context, and for those of you watching who are unaware, I was part of a small group that traveled to Sony headquarters in Tokyo in November 2023, and it was there that I saw and heard most of what I'm about to tell you. More recently, I was part of a much larger group that visited the Sony Pictures lot in Culver City, California, where I learned even more. And that was no typical press trip, but I'll talk about that in another video later this week. Right now though, I'm gonna lay out the nuts and bolts of some sweeping changes Sony has made to its TV and audio lineup and show you for the first time, possibly the most impressive mini LED TV I've ever seen. So the first bomb drop here is that Sony has completely transformed the naming convention for its TVs. Forget X90 this and A80 that, all that is gone. Here is Sony's 2024 TV lineup. Starting at the top, we've got the Bravia 9. Next after that is the Bravia 8. Stepping down from there, we get to the Bravia 7, and then the next and final step is the Bravia 3. Now let's start from the bottom and work our way up. The Bravia 3 is what I guess you could call Sony's entry-level TV, although Sony's entry-level is gonna perform more like other brands' medium to medium high level models. It's a direct LED TV, which means it does not have local dimming. It comes in sizes ranging from 43 inches up to 85 inches. It has Sony's 4K HDR X1 processor and 4K X Reality Pro upscaling, which is a step down from the higher models, but still among the best TV processors on the market. It has a 60 hertz panel, but still sports some gaming features like auto low latency mode. It supports Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, DTSX and DTS Surround, as well as HDR10 and HLG. It does not have an ATSC 3.0 tuner and it runs on the Google TV platform as all of Sony's TVs do. This will be Sony's most affordable TV. And yes, I think I will be reviewing it this year. Now, while I'm reluctant to compare it to a model from previous years, I guess you could liken it to an X80 series TV. The next step up is the Bravia 7. I suppose you could consider this a replacement for the X90L series last year, but it's quite a bit more advanced. Best just to think of it as Sony's second best LED TV now. That's because the Bravia 7 is a mini LED TV this year with full array local dimming, XR backlight master drive. It's armed with Sony's revered XR processor, which comes along with XR clear image upscaling that everyone raved about last year. It's got a 120 Hertz panel, acoustic multi-audio with voice zoom three. More on that amazing feature in the next video when we talk about audio stuff. It does have an ATSC 3.0 tuner and a four-way stand that allows for two different heights and two different widths. And it comes in sizes ranging from 55 to 85 inches. New for this year is a prime video calibrated mode as well as Netflix adaptive calibrated mode. And it adds IMAX enhanced among a myriad of other features that I'll talk about in a future deep dive video because some of those features are amazing and should not be glossed over. We just don't have time to do that right here. Next is the Bravia 8, and this might mess with your head a little bit. The Bravia 8 is an OLED TV. I'm gonna give some of you enthusiasts out there watching a little time to absorb that. Okay, yes, yeah, so the Bravia 8 is essentially replacing the A80L from last year, which is to say that it is a new OLED TV for Sony, and it uses a WRGB OLED panel, not a QD OLED panel. It's got all the same features as the Bravia 7, with the notable exception that it has acoustic surface audio, which as a reminder means that the screen itself makes sound, and we really dig that around here. Screen sizes for the Bravia 8 include 55, 65, and 77 inch variants. Now, try not to get too hung up that as far as model names go, the Bravia 8 and OLED TVs 
have been folded in among LED TVs with no apparent distinction to consumers. Those of you who care, please plan to join me in a future video in which we will commiserate over that and debate the merits of Sony's decision to do so. For now though, we must not be distracted because it is time to talk about Sony's flagship TV for 2024, guaranteed to be one of the most exciting TVs of the year, the Bravia 9. The Bravia 9 employs the new mini LED backlight technology that I showed you at the beginning of this year. Now for anyone who missed that video or just needs the simplified version, Sony's new mini LED backlight panels feature legitimately innovative, super tiny backlight control chips that allow more mini LEDs to be packed into a tighter space, much higher brightness while also using far less power and they have more granular dimming control, which frankly is, in my opinion, their most impressive attribute. The result is a mini LED TV that can push above 4,000 nits of brightness in peak highlight areas, which I will argue is both impressive and important. However, what I'm most excited about is the potential for this TV to minimize blooming and halo effect while also offering extremely good low light performance and shadow detail. In short, if what I saw during demonstrations translates into real life performance the way I hope and expect it will, the Bravia 9 will be the most technically accurate and visually impressive LED TV ever made. It can do things that the famous Z9D simply could not do. And while this is not the deep dive video, I feel like I need to explain why. I think that's the case. We like to get excited about high brightness TVs because brightness is an important component of contrast and also it's just straight up dazzling. But in 2024, there will be a ton of bright TVs on the market, some of which lay claim to getting much brighter than the Bravia 9 here. No, the real measure of how good this year's mini LED TVs will be is gonna be how well they pull off low luminance images while also mitigating the blooming or halo effect that TV nerds like me love to hate. That is the real challenge. And it is those measures that will get a mini LED TV looking closer to OLED in terms of contrast and overall picture performance, while also being able to display bright highlight detail in a way that OLED TVs simply cannot. The reason that I think the Bravia 9 can pull this off starts with Sony's excellent processing, but it is the granular dimming control that is gonna bring it home. And to illustrate how it is different than other brands' mini LED systems, I actually wanna head into the kitchen here and pull up my Vivint Smart Home app. No, this is not an ad for Vivint, I swear, I just think this is gonna make the most meaningful illustration. But before we do move over there, let me explain how other mini LED TVs work. So for years, when we've talked about local dimming, I think folks have thought of the LED dimming action on a TV to be kind of like a dimmer switch for your lights at home. You have off, you have full blast on, and then you have lots of subtle levels in between. But in reality, most LED dimming is an on or off proposition. If you want an area to be dark, you turn off the backlights behind that area. If you want it to be bright, you turn on the backlights in that area. And then all the subtlety of brightness levels in between is actually handled by the LCD cells being either open or closed or somewhere in between. Now to offer finer control than just having huge blocks of dimmable lights, more dimming zones were added. So you could have something super bright sitting next to something super dark. Now this helps, but it's also really hard to do quickly, which is why often TVs with a bunch of dimming zones appear to brighten and darken kind of sluggishly. What we've really needed for mini LED TVs to get better is a backlight dimming system that actually did work like the dimmable LED lights that we have at home. See, here on my Vivint app, I can dim or brighten each light on the kitchen track independently. Those are the zones for our little analogy. But I can also dim them at a granular level, 20%, 30%, 40%, and so on, all the way up to full power. It's that kind of granular dimming control that Sony has at work in its new backlight system. And you can see its benefits here in this demo where they have their new flagship backlight system right against their own flagship backlight system from last year. You can see 
very clearly here that there is much finer control than Sony's own best TV last year. And that's what I think is gonna set the Bravia 9 apart from the rest of the pack this year. It's got all the features, up to 4,000 nits peak performance, and it comes in 65, 75, and 85 inch sizes. So now you finally know what I've been knowing for a, a minute now. No more rumors or speculation, that's the deal. Oh, and before I go, just a reminder that all the rumors that you may have heard about the A95L QD OLED, that it was going away or that Sony was quitting OLED, all of them are false. The A95L will continue to be Sony's flagship OLED through at least most of 2024. Whether we see an update to that model this year is, well, that is up in the air. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I know I don't even have to ask you for the comments, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What do you think of Sony's new lineup and more specifically the new model names? Do you like the simplicity? Think it's more confusing? Let me know down below. Hit the like button if you would please and subscribe so you don't miss the next two videos wherein I'll talk about Sony's new audio lineup, including the successor to the super popular HTA9 and later a deeper dive into what Sony is offering this year. I'll see you on the next one and until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.